What are bacteria? Even though they are tiny little things, they talk to each other, they have wars, they can count. And it's all going on in this invisible world. The Museum of Natural History knew that they wanted this exhibition to be about bacteria. In a process like working with a museum, you might be working over quite a long period with somebody like me who will be honing the story as we work together and think about what might be the most powerful way of bringing that research to life. In general, microbiology is fairly poorly communicated to the public because a lot of it is things we don't see. So the big thing that was done here is to recognise how beautiful bacteria and microbes can be. They really are stunning when they grow in particular ways, they make beautiful pigments and colours. With that you can communicate to all walks of life. Even for a research community that can be transformative because people immediately get what you're talking about and they're engaged. But that's also brought in more people that we hadn't realised were doing bacteriology across the university. So the, the group of interacting scientists across the universities increased. You know an exhibition is working when you, you start off the process and it's a rather formal interview and then two or three or four meetings in it's just a natural conversation with people being naturally enthusiastic and that's exactly the aspect of science that we want to convey to the public. We'll grow them up over the next week or so, take photos of them all and then some of the nicest ones will be reproduced by an artist and put into our bacterial exhibition that's opening in October. There's nothing better than standing within what you created. Being able to see people consume the result of many people's hard work is always great fun. The minute I saw the giant E. coli on the ceiling, I was already kind of sold. <laughs> I feel like what I've learned is reliable and factual and has come from research. The Museum of Natural History has almost three quarters of a million visitors coming through its doors every year and to be able to connect your research story to an audience of that scale is obviously extraordinary. Really enjoyable um, because it really does make you think about how to explain the, the, some of the intricate details of your own research. A lot of the times it was actually innovative and interesting, certainly provocative, you know it wasn't that I always agreed the big deviations from my own uh, recommendations were, were, were good ones, I think, yeah. Those stories are still there and crucially we're still in active dialogue with those researchers to make sure that we're still telling their story accurately and authentically. But they've made a really good job of, of telling a really quite complicated story in, you know, not that big a space, you know, from the origins of life on Earth, really, all the way through to, you know, bacterial behaviour in your gut. It's all there. And I just feel quite humbled that they could actually do that.